Well, with that, let me introduce it to introduce our guest speaker and turn over the program to her. We're really pleased that Kathleen Edmond has joined us. Kathleen is the Chief Ethics Officer for Best Buy. In that role, she develops and directs global visions for the company's ethics and business conduct programs. She's also a key partner in the work the company does in corporate social responsibility. She has helped build the company's ethics officer since she joined the company in 2002. She operates in a matrix fashion where she engages with leaders from all over the world and at all levels of the organization, from store leadership to Best Buy's board of directors. Prior to her role as an ethics officer, Kathleen also held employment law positions with Best Buy and Musicland. She also serves as an adjunct professor for the University of St. Thomas in the business ethics area and has served as an adjunct professor at the William Mitchell College of Law. She also has extensive experience in social work and human resources business management. In 2009, Kathleen was recognized as one of the 100 most influential persons in business ethics by Ethisphere, a recognition she also achieved in 2010. She served on the board of the Ethics and Compliance Officer Association since 2006. In the spirit of full disclosure, uh, I also serve on Best Buy's Board of Directors, but I am not here in that capacity today. I'm here in the capacity as the leader of the Center for Ethical Business Cultures. Well, we will today explore the impact of social media on corporate culture. A couple of years ago, Kathleen and one of her colleagues were with us. They were new in the process where they helped us understand all of the ways that uh, you could reach out to customers and employees and business partners in the social media environment. But now two years later, she is fresh with uh, new insights and lessons learned. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to uh, uh, welcome today Kathleen Edmund. Kathleen, welcome. Hey, thank you. Welcome to everyone on the phone. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining the conversation. I, um, I can see that there are several folks on the phone that I consider colleagues. Uh, welcome, and uh, please feel free to ask questions of any sort, critical or challenging or otherwise. As we repeat them, by the way, we will not repeat your name. So, um, so you can remain anonymous in the questions, and we can be um, direct in the conversation. That said, let, let my little short disclaimer in starting out is uh, to be very clear that I don't come here saying I'm the expert or that what we're doing is perfect. Uh, I learn from this every day. In fact, I expect and hope that um, when we get to the conversations, um, we will uh, we'll be able to um, share current learnings and our thoughts for the future. If at any time you can't hear me, I, my voice fades, please just drop a note to the, the administrator or online and I'll make sure to speak up and speak more clearly. Okay, so next slide. We'll talk really today about three examples. Primarily we'll talk about the blog, but we'll also talk about some other ways we've reached out using, uh, using media to engage employees in the conversation and really focus on um, issue spotting, finding issues and solving them before the uh, before they become a problem. So the blog. Next slide, please. Why and when did we start using it? First of all, it, it, the always behind the scenes. There's there's more than one knows. But back in 2006 and seven, I had a group of employees who I kind of use as my muses saying, you know, you've got to get out on the social media, you've got, to, you know, you've got to be out there and talking with folks. And honestly, I was nervous. I said, oh, I'll look, like, I'll look foolish. Um, it will be, it's too risky. And they kept urging and urging, and I kept dragging my feet. Finally, in 2008, I began doing so tentatively. I would post like once a month. I, would, I just wound myself up in knots, thinking I've got to get this right. And... Um, and I think the product showed it. I think it, I w it was dull, it wasn't interesting, and it didn't achieve what I wanted to. Later that year, uh, one of the other uh, couple of employees said, you know what, good for you for being out there, 
let us help you. <laughs> Let's help you. And I said, okay, great. What do you, how do you want to help? And they said, we'll write it for you. If you come and just give us little germs of ideas, we'll write it. And that's what's happened now. So I, I actually post once a week. I come up with the ideas. I give it to the, uh, it's a communications writer in HR. He writes very directly and conversationally. As If you go on the blog, you can see it. We post kind of challenging questions and use it as a catalyst for conversation. So that's been... Um, Fabulous. People often ask, how long does it, how much time do you devote to writing the blog? And honestly, quite, um, I think conservatively, I would say I spend maybe 30 minutes a week at most. Most of my, my time is spent getting the ideas, germinating the ideas, um, talking with the writer about it, Kind of reviewing what he's written, and then there are times that I'll shop if it's if it involves if the story involves someone, I will go to that someone and say, "Here's what I want to post. Is this okay with you? Do you feel like you know your your identity is is protected enough, and and uh, do you want to edit it in any way?" So we'll we'll do that. That said, everything I post is um, true. It is not a compilation of events. It is a single event, and, but the only thing I take out of there is anyone's identity and anything that is um, proprietary information to the company. Why did we start doing it? You know what? Quite honestly, the conversation is going on out there anyway, and you can either join it or you can get passed by. I mean, that's, it's not like there's a big choice. It, you, you, there's one or the other. Get in there or know that it goes on without you. Another big question is um, why people say, um, why KathleenEdmond.com? And I've gotten uh, pinged, actually, on some other blogs about, uh, oh, gosh, isn't she arrogant? And doesn't, you know, she just wants, she just thinks she's all that. Uh, and that may be true, but that's not, <laughs> that's not why I named it like that. My, my that was, actually wasn't my intent. My, I was going to write it as the Ethics Office of Best Buy, and I was counseled by my, again, I, I have this group of employees that I really listen to because they're really smart in this area. And they said, this generation has to know you. They don't care about your office. They don't care about your role. They want to know who you are. And if they get a feel for who you are, they will come to you with real issues and ask questions. I, in my head, said, oh, yeah, right. Uh, but... Honestly, that's happened. I, there is there's some traffic on the blog. People can follow it. Uh, but more than that, I will get at least one call a week from someone who says, you know what, uh, I work in a store in Lansing, Michigan, and there's something going on here that you should know about. Or I work in Toledo, and, um, and I read your blog, and so can you help me out here? So there is really, it does open that door for conversation. Well, not not all of it. In fact, not even most of it falls within what what I would uh, comprise to call an ethics issue. It does, I think, fall in the preventive area. It gives people access and a voice, and says, "Let let me solve something before it becomes a problem." So that's just been fabulous. Um, the other question that comes up all the time is why why external? Why not? There are lots of companies that do an excellent job of having internal sites, internal stories, internal learnings, and they say, you know, how, isn't this just risky to go external? My um, experience and belief is that there really isn't anything that is inside the firewall. And it came back in 2003 or four. there was a, a fairly large internal investigation that was going on at a, during the holiday, which is um, in retail a, a very... Um, important time for the for the company. Anyway, the, the head of retail operations then was trying to calm the waters, wrote an, uh, an internal memo to everyone saying, look, we know this is going on, we're working on it, we'll keep you all apprised, but don't lose focus on, on the customer, make sure that, that we're giving the best service, etc. Um, that was a full full page memo. That memo in its entirety showed up on a gaming site out of the UK in six hours. That was it, it, that was like what I say oh four oh five so that was, that was six years ago. From that point on, I realized there's nothing mm -hmm. inside, and if I wanted to own the message, I needed to be the one to put it out there and respond to it. So um, so while I think that um, the internal sites are extremely useful, it's a way to engage employees. 
always remember that you have cut and paste on your computer and people can cut and paste and put stuff out there. So, uh, so don't uh, loosen your guard and think that this won't be external. Just the, the, in fact, every email I write, I presume, will be on the, e on the Internet within about 10 seconds. So there are lots of days I write and delete, and I write and delete um, because. Kathleen, one thing that uh, strikes me about what you've just described um, is this whole notion of personality fit when you're deciding to do a blog. And in your case, you mentioned uh, as you were thinking about it, you have to step back and say, hey, do I have the sort of skills, communication, to be able to be writing blogs? And you step back and reached out to professionals who do this in their day job every day to give you advice and counsel. Uh, but then the other side is um, just the interpersonal, putting yourself out in front of anonymous parties was another apprehension that you had to overcome. Can you talk a little bit about how you sort of overcame those yeah. those hurdles? Sure. And um, I'd love to tell you that I was smart enough to figure it out at the beginning. I mean, one of my, my part of my background is as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Lawyers all think they can write. I think I can write. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I needed a writer. Uh, what I learned was that the way I write is fine for a certain skill set. It is um, dull as dirt <laughs> in the blog setting. So, I mean, I was reading it. Even I was bored reading what I was writing. And that's when I thought, oh, I need help. <laughs> so, you know, so I reached out and, and that. So I, while I wasn't able to predict it, I was, um, I was able to see it. And that, that honestly, and I'll talk about it again later, but one of the things about being on a blog is that, or being out there, is um, you gotta, you've got to be able to um, be critical of, critical in a good sense, of your own behavior, and you've got to have a thick skin. So uh, it, it's kind of, it, it seems a, a kind of a non sequitur, but you've got to be vulnerable and thick skinned at the same time. Got it. Um, the the other thing was the the conversational piece of it. It um, it took a while for me to do that. I I tend to be that that just tends not to be who I am. So that was another reason why I had somebody write in a way that was conversational. I can I can do this. I can talk with you all day long. I can have these conversations. I get more stilted in writing. So again, it, it's you know let, let's get someone and play to their strengths. We. Uh, we actually, as Best Buy, have spent many years being and building a strengths-based organization. So that that thinking was helpful to me, in to be able to say, identify this is maybe not a strength of mine. Let's find somebody that can play here. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and the next page is just a screen from the screenshot from the blog. You could go there. It's kind of the most recent post. As you can see, it's very. Um, they're short. They're kind of to the point and a couple of questions to, to think about. I will uh, alternate between using real events and using just very interesting kinds of studies or research. I think this one was about um, a piece of research that I think was about the creative, are creative people more likely to cheat? So a little summary of that, link to that, make sure you're not stealing anyone's intellectual property, so make sure that you have that counsel also and how to link properly either if you use YouTube or you use a, a link. And then could it happen here? What would you do if you saw this? Um, how do you balance that need to be creative and then also have the right bumpers on it? So it's those kinds of conversations that um, there is not, not as much conversation online. I do get feedback that people have groups that they talk about within, within their settings in the stores. Um, and by the way, I have a lot of readers outside the company. That was the uh, other kind of challenge in starting it out. Um, lots of concern, uh, one, one good colleague and lots of people that had my best interests at heart, quite honestly, said, this is a roadmap for plaintiff's counsel. Um, it is, uh, you're putting yourself at risk here. And of course, that made me nervous. So I, I talked to uh, the general counsel, uh, at the time, and we talked about it, and he said, yes, it's a risk. We are in a business that we need to take risks, and the preventive opportunity will save us millions. So let's go do it. Let's watch it. If it doesn't work, we'll do something else. So right now, I try to post weekly. I um, always encourage people, if you've got something to put on there, you know, go out there. Put it out there. 
let's have the conversation because it is uh, viewership is outside the the company also. Okay. Um, lessons learned. I learned not to try to do it alone. Um, I was a little clunky about learning that lesson, but I ultimately did learn it that uh, that I didn't neither had the skills nor the vision to do this by myself. And it was it's always good to have someone who's not as um, invested in it take a look at it and give you some feedback. Um, always don't don't believe your own press. I mean, make sure you surround yourself with people who. Uh, care about you enough to be critical of you and give you feedback that is well intended and not just what you want to hear. Um, push your comfort limits. I, I, uh, that, that one was true for me. If, if I only did what I was comfortable doing, it would be uh, ordinary. And, and all of us who practice in this area know that one of the challenges we have all the time, how do we keep the message fresh? How do we keep it in front of people? How do we keep people engaged? Signing off on the code, giving code training annually, easy enough to do. You can check the box. You can hold it out and say, gosh, I did this. Um, but did you really make a difference? Did you really prevent anything? Did you really engage and educate people by doing that? And, and what you're hearing here now is my bias about what's, what's important in, on the preventive side. Another lesson is go where it takes you. Um, again, the lessons I'm talking about are uh, unfortunately really revealing of me. I tend to be pretty controlling and you know you want to guide this and say, oh, it should go here, oh, it should go there. It's not gonna. It's going, it's going to go wherever wherever it goes. Um, and so the um, so watch it. I, the the two things, two rules I have is that, uh, of course, I screen everything that goes out there first because you'll get a lot of Viagra ads that are not relevant. So you'll you'll screen stuff before before you release it for a post. Um, but don't change what people say. If they say something snarky about you, put it up there. Um, the only things that I will take down, and I and I talk with people about it, is that if they do a take a personal attack against someone else, if they said. Um, oh gosh, uh, Ron James is on your board and you know he blah, 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 blah. I would never put that out there. So I would call the, the right back to the poster and I would say, um, you know what, I will not put that person's name out there. If you want to say you know someone on our board of directors that is blah, 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 I'll put that out there, but I will not put a personal attack out there. And, and so they'll say, okay, you know, uh, fine. I will also call if there or write if there is uh, an in, inadvertent release of, of confidential information. I'll write to the, the general the employee and say, did you know that this would give out? And they say, oh my goodness, I didn't intend to, to do that. The third thing I, I do is I get a lot of customer comments on there, uh, using it as a customer kind of complaint source. I'll go back to them and say, did you intend this to be posted publicly or did you intend this to be handled internally to solve your problem? And then they'll, they'll say, well, I meant to be internal, so I, so I won't post it publicly. Lots of folks don't know. So there's just clarity and transparency. But um, in terms of editing someone's post, it's been twice in three years. Other than that, it's just out there. Uh, and in fact, I, uh, it's kind of a, a good segue to what may be on several people's mind. There was Recently, in the last two or three weeks, a, a blogger um, got posted on Forbes.com that then our CEO, Brian Dunn, uh, has a, a blog, Brian, Brian's Whiteboard. And it's been very active and lots of comments. It's just lots of views. I'm sure it was, last time I saw it was over two and a half million views and bunches of posts, two to 300 posts. Um, and people say, gosh, was that a bad idea? And I talked with Brian before earlier this week to say, gosh, Brian, Ron and I are going to do this. He said, absolutely tell people that, um, you know, you can't, if you're going to go out there, you're going to be out there. You can't stop the conversation, dig for the kernels of truth, listen for them, act on them. Um, you, you, they're going to hurt, they're going to sting, but you're going to get information that is extremely valuable. What you cannot do is open the door and then say, oh, I don't like what you're saying, and shut it again. You will get massacred on the, on, in the social media area. So be very clear 
when you, if you decide to do this, that, that it's going to be open and you're going to let it go where it goes and whatever rules you have, you're transparent about them and you follow those when you take something down. Okay, uh, benefits, more than I can imagine. I engaged, so there are now probably 180,000 employees uh, across the Best Buy Enterprise. And the ethics office is small, small being me plus um, a half-time, a uh, couple half-time people and um, volunteers. I tend to get the. It's a great, it's a great company to, for people to have energy, and they volunteer to help out in a lot of ways. So that's it. That's all of us. The, the the blog using social media has engaged people in ways I didn't think possible. I talked a little bit about it earlier with people calling, um, people saying. We, it's important to us to work for a company that is, has integrity, is ethical, has good business conduct. This is a belief. When, when you're that transparent, I believe that I can make a difference. I believe that an individual can make a difference. I believe that a voice can be heard. Um, I have been, people have sourced issues that we've been able to address before they've gotten uh, out, uh, out of hand or become a bad, a bad story. And customers and others use it. Former employees use it. Vendors use it to say, you know what, um, I've been treated unfairly by one of your employees. And so we get out there and we fix that. So it's, it's just engaged people in a really uh, different way. I learn every day um, things that I wouldn't have otherwise had access to learn. People have stepped up and said, let me, let me help you out. You'll see from the agent of justice that we'll talk about next. That was a whole other piece of work that came out of this. <clears throat> There's distributed ownership. And um, uh, where Best Buy is involved with the Better Business Bureau Centennial, um, and just the other day, Brian Dunn, the CEO, taped a piece for the Better Business Bureau about ethics in the marketplace. One of the questions was, who owns eth ethics at your company? And I was watching Brian tape it, and he says, everyone. I mean, this is not this is not Kathleen Edmond. This is not Brian Dunn. Is, every person that walks through this door owns the ethics in this company because when anyone goes to shop, it's that blue shirt that that you interact with at the store who um, exemplifies the ethics of the of the organization. It's the person you call. So it's it's not owned by a single party. That is actually a benefit about being out on the on the internet with it. Um, and I think the other thing is that ethics shows up in a very different way within Best Buy. It's not um, good or bad. I mean, it's just it's different. I, I think it's good. Others think that it uh, that maybe that does, it's not right for their culture, which is fine. I, as we all know that um, we we are we operate within our own corporate cultures, and however we we act and uh, forward the message, it's got to be consistent with the culture around us. So, but, but ethics now at Best Buy, people are, feel very comfortable reaching out to me. My, my direct number is all over this, it's all over the code. People will call and say, I, I really hate to bother you, but can you, you should know this. Um, so they don't feel like, like there's a barrier there. What's the next slide we'll say? Internally selling the use of social media. This, again, lots of people have asked, um, how, how did you get people to buy off on this? First of all, I think I was very um, fortunate that, it, that within the culture and setting I'm at, it wasn't as difficult as I, it would be for uh, folks in different kinds of settings. Um, General Counsel was very supportive uh, at the time. He took risks. Um, backing me, but he said, you know, I think this is the right thing. We are um, we are a, a social media focused company. We have got to be out there, and we can't only be out there intermittently. So let's let's do it. Um, outside counsel. I had outside counsel who was a former fe former federal prosecutor, huge supporter, and every time he got the opportunity, he also would say this is the right thing to do. And I, I understood later that folks would, would uh, leaders um, would go to the, the outside general, the outside counsel and say, gosh, should, should you really be doing this? And um, Chris, his name's Chris, would say, you know what, there's a um, hundred reasons not to do it. 
and a thousand reasons to do it. You got to do it. You got to take the risk. And so you, you have to make sure that you know who your support is in there. You keep them informed. I kept the audit committee informed, kept the board informed. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons that kind of pushed me over the edge to start it was it was in an audit committee meeting four or five years ago, and one of the board members was um, exasperated because I was giving a report about some issues that had happened, and he said, how do we stop this? How do we get people information so that they know what to do and how to act? You know, we've got a company of 150,000 employees at the time. Um, turnover, it's retail turnover was 60 to 70 percent annually, which is actually very good for retail. And we have one, one and a half people doing it. You know, I, I had to use whatever tool was out there. So, um, so yeah, I keep them informed annually. Here's what, here's the viewership. Here's the engagement. This is what we're trying next. It also helped tremendously that our CEO and chief marketing officer. Uh, were and still out there a lot on blog and Twitter. So again, laying the groundwork um, expected. And then also edginess is actually culturally expected within within the company. <clears throat> we do a lot of the internal communications and um, videos sometimes actually me ca make me catch my breath. They're a little bit, I mean, they're like, really? <laughs> we're going to do this? So so we fit within, within that context. And Kathleen, <coughs> would you say, um, you know, you talk to a lot of groups anecdotally, are you seeing other adopters of this approach? Um, um, what's been the trend from your perspective? Um, lots of people are, are, are uh, adopting it uh, more and more internally. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually get notes from um, all over the world, Europe, Singapore, uh, sometimes students. One, one young intern um, said in France said, oh, you, I see your blog, I read it. Uh, you've got to help me persuade our board of directors that this is the way that young people talk to each other. Uh, I don't know that I was successful with that, but I, but I also know that I, I hear from others that um, will use the blog to their internal management and say, that spy is out there doing this, can we? And often they say, get the answer, no, you can't, but you can do an internal blog. So that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Again, my caution, just make sure that anything you post internally, if it shows externally, you're comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. So lots of more people are doing doing internal. I don't know of anyone doing an external uh, company blog yet, but maybe. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What do we see next? Advice, I think some of it might be a repeat. Leverage what you have. Uh, use your resources. Um, if you're going to do this, you have to be vulnerable and have a thick skin, which is kind of... It seems, you know, um, like a non sequitur, but but you do. You have to be both. So you have to show who you are and be vulnerable to the public and then also know that anyone with a keyboard can say anything they want and it can be very hurtful. So it's not about you. It's about whatever they wanted to say. Um, is there some piece of, piece of truth in there that will be useful to you, the work you're trying to do, or to the company? Take that. The rest of it, just let it float off in the wind. Um, listen to what you receive. There's kernels of truth that are just going to be invaluable. People will tell you things that maybe they never would have otherwise. Um, be transparent with what you'll screen. Don't screen out unflattering comments as much as you would like to sometimes. And then don't shut down the conversation once you've invited it. I think that's probably the, the key. Know before you go in that um, you're in this for the long haul. Ethical considerations. For me, um, certainly I not allowing personal attacks, watching for the release of confidential or proprietary information. The stories that I use on the blog have to have a purpose. There has to be a learning, a teaching, um, and I don't post anything out there that's just salacious and gossip. Um, and then human dignity. They, that if there is one thing that, that makes me sad about the, the social media and the Internet is that some people use this as being uh, an opportunity just to be uncivil. So I have to back out on some of that. Um, okay, next slide. Measuring effectiveness and importance. The, there's two things. They're both pretty fresh. Um, I, I am oh, I'm not a measurement person, so I've always been baffled by um, how do I measure effectiveness? Again, through the blog and through some connections, um, 
there was an introduction with a professor in a Harvard Business School, assistant professor at the Harvard Business School, who said, I want to try to um, measure the, it, whether the transparency of the blog has an impact on business results. So I don't know how they're going to do it. I hooked them up with some really smart people inside Best Buy, and they're, they're working on that now. Um, I know that the University of St. Thomas has used another social media uh, incident that happened a couple years ago with a store employee uh, posting a, a little video out there that got a lot of views um, when the iPhone first came out. And are using that as a teaching. Uh, Ken Goodpaster actually is writing it up and he used it as a teaching tool just about uh, how to, what's a good way to respond. I think that our response on that one was raggedy in the beginning, and maybe our misstep can help others learn from it. So, so there's ways that we can use that, um, and it's more anecdotal. I mean, I, I doubt I'll ever be able to come out and say 77% of the time you spend on social media gets this kind of, of uh, payback, but if we can do some anecdotal and build that effectiveness piece. There's also a couple, and maybe this is for the next webinar, but there's been a couple of new reports. I saw something on Ethicos the other day, and there's uh, some internal Best Buy um, surveys that are asking folks, consumers and employee, to rate what's important for you as an employee and for you as a consumer in terms of uh, dealing with the company. Reputation, integrity, uh, not being out in the press with um, failings and you know cheating, corruption is important to folks. Sometimes even more important than the traditional uh, environmental attention, et cetera. So I don't know whether that will hang out, how that will actually uh, hold together going forward. I think it's an interesting conversation, and I think it's one that I'd be fascinated to have in the future. Uh, so. Creating open and transparent, the agent of justice. Oh, of course, I'm always talking too long. Let me go quickly through these. Uh, the agent of justice. We have a, a group of service folks called the Geek Squad. Geek Squad has a very strong brand, and um, they're very clear about their, uh, their ethics. I got a call from one of the agents in, I think it was in Ohio, last spring, who had helped me out on uh, an internal forum I had done. Anyway, he wrote to me and, and said, you know, um, there's this Geek Squad community and forum that they're online all the time. And he said, by the way, you're getting killed on the forum. And I said, well, why? What happened? Well, uh, the agents think you don't understand them. They think that you don't respond quickly enough. They think that their issues aren't addressed. And um, hurt. It did hurt. Um, but it was probably true because I didn't understand half of what they were complaining about. So you'd go back and, and they were passionate about it. In any event, so I said, so what do I do? And he said, you need an agent with a low badge number to be your face in the community. By now, I was feeling um, so stupid that I didn't even ask him what the low badge number meant. And it took me months to figure out that, that there's a ranking based on badge number and the longer you've been there, the lower badge number and, and your, your um, place in the hierarchy is enhanced. So anyway, he had a low badge number, so he said, uh, let's, let's get out there. I said, fine, we can call it the Ethics Geek, which I thought, of course, was cute, and I got dead air, and I said, okay, fine. So what do we call it? He said, well, we've been talking about it. We should call it the Agent of Justice. Great. So he actually went out. They started an um, uh, email site. He's out on the forum. I mean, when I'm talking about out on the forum, I'm talking um, nine hours a day. I mean, they are, that, that is just how folks communicate all the time. And so he would like case find stuff. We direct it to asset protection. I thought when I asked for some of his time, I said, you know, if I, I need an hour and a half a week. After the first month, he was spending six to seven hours a week and getting 10, 10 issues. So we were heading stuff off. We were, you know, it was great. Um, there were lessons learned there. He... Uh, <laughs> He was, a, he was a Geek Squad agent and pretty independent. He was doing some stuff out on his social media that um, didn't put a good face on the ethics office. It was, it was around the, uh, this last Thanksgiving when, when we were open late. He had a point of view that he shared. Another agent said, gosh, your ethics office is doing this, so I had to talk with him. Um, we got through it, but 
he felt like his wings were clipped. So I said, that's okay. Well, let's go to, it's, he had gone to corporate anyway. So I said, let's, it's time to go to the next round, Agent of Justice 2. We had, uh, we had like 20, 20 agents saying, I want to help. We ended up with four of them who will now not only do the forums, we've got one working in China, we've got another one working in community store. We've got a bunch of things I hadn't thought about. But um, if you think about it, the, the folks in the agent community and the services are 20 to 30,000 strong in the, in the organization. I now have a link to those people through a social media site that I never predicted. I mean, as I, if that's another piece of, of um, uh, advice, you are, we are all limited by our own imagination. My imagination is not as good as that of some others. So put down your barriers. Let others make up these things for you, and then think about would it work or not. Um, so I would never. So the age of justice is great. The next generation, then the next four or five that are coming on, it's exciting. And I've got a bench for 18 months down the road who say I want to do this, and I said you got to wait. Mm -hmm. um, so just new stuff. One other, and then we'll open it. Next slide. Uh, the other the other thing that we're doing, and this is in conjunction with the compliance, the woman who works on my team actually spans ethics and compliance within the organization. And uh, you know those sign-on screens that, that you get when you turn on your computer that says, this is the property of XYZ company, et cetera, that become white noise after like the first week or so? We wanted to use to um, to be a, an effective kind of communication. So this is a, a sample shot of a screen screenshot. I think folks can read it, but if not, um, I'll read it to you. In any event, we write them again. Work with the communications team to to write it and um, change it probably every week, two weeks. The first one, can you say Huskow as a Best Buy employee? You could do something that's more than just a violation of policy. You could break the law. When that happens, people get prosecuted. Guilty people can even get jail time. Don't do time. Don't cross that line. There are easier ways to meet Lindsay Lohan. Read Best Buy's Code of Ethics for more information. It's located at Ego or here, so you can click through. Now, again, learning. Funny. We thought this was edgy. Some people would say, oh, did you get in trouble for the Lindsay Lohan? No, we got in trouble for Huskow because people didn't know what it meant. <laughs> so it's like, okay. And then the next page is just another one. Uh, Again, we use it particularly to talk about information security, confidentiality, customer information, the code of business ethics. Um, so there are, you know, the, and people come back and say, I, I read these. I never used to read these. I read these now. So the, this, this constant awareness of the importance of information, the code, is there every day. And people will read it, see what's new today or new this week. So again, my, not my idea. Uh, it was the uh, work of the, the director on my team, and she carried it out. Love it, you know. Next slide. Trends globally. Certainly, um, it goes without saying that the world is, is flat, and people are talking uh, online all the time. It will only grow that way. People use, uh, I know on our hotline, and I, and I understand from my colleagues in, in other companies, that the use of reporting using the internet is growing exponentially beyond what people use on the telephone. People really won't use the phone to call. Uh, it will be, it's going to be online. In the future, I don't know. I mean, again, this is where I really look to you on the phone and, and others that, to think about what's next. Uh, that that I think is going to be the hardest thing is really anticipating how next, how do we keep this fresh, how do we keep the message alive, and where are the risks? What we do know, or at least I, I firmly believe, is that transparency is changing our world. Transparency is expected. Um, people will put stuff out there whether you want them to or not, and that I don't see changing at any time in the future. Closing, my comments. I actually feel... Um, um, just thrilled to be in a company that has allowed me and actually encouraged me to first push the, the envelope in the way that, that it has. It's been uncomfortable. It's been uh, exciting. It's been all of those things. Um, and I'm even more grateful to the folks around me who let me fall, have come back and picked me up, who said this is stupid, who've said 
you know, gosh, you're not edgy enough, who just have been kind enough to be honest enough to just keep me going out there and um, keep me fresh on that. Now, I want to hear from you. What are you working on? What questions do you have to, for me or Ron um, or open air? Yep. A couple of questions have come in, Kathleen, and I'll remind everyone that you can simply go to the, di to the dialogue box, type in a question, and send it back uh, via all panelists. Uh, we'll get it and uh, respond to you. Uh, here's one question, though, Kathleen, and it's regarding um, um, comments on blogs coming from the outside of the company that may alert you to an issue that may be emerging, mm -hmm. either outside or inside the company. Mm -hmm. Are there any examples like that or experiences that you've had like that? Um, yes, particularly customers who will say, I had this experience in the store and um, I was mis misled or I was sold something that I didn't want or there was an attachment, wh whatever that might be. We'll bring it back to the store. We'll bring it back to um, the, the leaders and say, this is one or this is three of these kind of things. I don't know if it's worth digging into, but why don't we take a, why don't you take a look at it? Again, it's, it, I'll pass it on to folks mm -hmm. who, um, who would handle it. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's not a completely um, comp uh, full early warning system, but it is one way to get some early warning notices of things. Sure. There's another question, but I think you gave this uh, perhaps after the question was asked. Um, the uh, writer was looking for an example of going where the conversation takes you. What's been a surprise to you? And I know one example you were illustrating was the agent of justice. Mm -hmm. How you started down one path, but then it opened up your mind, even in terms of what to call it, right. uh, to a different way to think about it. But are there other examples of uh, uh, things that have emerged um, where you have to follow the conversation where it was going and not necessarily where you would want it to go? Yeah. Um. I, I think that one of one of the conversations early on was we had um, before we did this we did all the traditional stuff we did uh, videos or training videos and, and little cute kind of vignettes and 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 uh, you know what our internal team is very good they did a great job they were edgy at, at, I thought edgy um, and I got comments from a couple of folks when we kind of opened this up that said you know those those video vignettes you used cute but so old. I mean they were six months old and already folks were saying this is so yesterday. You know, can we do something current? And I realized that, that the traditional methods of shooting a video and doing that just weren't going to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, and with the money you spent doing it and the time doing it, it stung, mm -hmm. but we quit doing it. Mm -hmm. well, here's another question uh, about who gets to see these. Does your does your board, as an example, get a chance to watch the blog, or how are they uh, kept up to speed on what's going on in this space? Um, you know, it is, it's it's um, online, so I, if they look at it, uh, they know it's out there. I remind probably twice a year, uh, at least once a year, we'll remind folks it's out there. Here's the the numbers that have, that we've seen out there, um, the the amount of views are sometimes it's hard to count because you get some ping back stuff, but um, we're getting between four and 12,000 views um, a month, um, and they're not all internal, they're external, and here's some of the stuff that's out there. So I'll tell them about it and give them some short summaries about why, why I think it's a good thing. Now, the conversations that go on behind the scenes, I'm not privy to. I don't know what they think, but they've not said, don't do this anymore. It's like, here's a way that we're educating. Um, and I've gotten, gotten good feedback from some of the more established community that, that this is a good thing, too. So uh, I do keep them informed and let them know what's, what's out there, and often in a pre-read. You know, honestly, when the board meets, there are so many things um, just critical to the business that they have to spend their time with that I want to make sure they have the information they need uh, that they can look at without trying to be self-aggrandizing in, in any way. But here's the information you need. Uh, reach out to me and ask questions and, you know, take the time running the business, which is critical for all of us. 
What about globalization? You talked about that briefly. Mm -hmm. um, are there cultural implications as you work with uh, different cultures? Best Buy does business in countries mm -hmm. around the world. Uh, so are there different cultural thoughts about transparency? Uh, are some cultures more closed than open? And how do you work in those cultures? Um, so I, I do try to find stories that have occurred in different parts of the enterprise, so uh, Canada, Mexico, and post them. While I won't call out the name of the country, I will say this happened outside the U.S. Um, and one of the mis mistakes that I, I understand that we've made um, in trying to be very culturally sensitive I've gotten feedback from both colleagues in China and colleagues in Mexico, back off, this is wrong no matter where you go. Don't say you have to be culturally sensitive about you know, taking a bribe. It's wrong. We know what happens here, it's wrong, and don't say it, you know. So it's like, okay, heard it. Um, and I actually, there was <laughs> one of our uh, former employees who left and, and got a job at a in Mexico wrote to me and said, oh, your blog's a big hit at Mexico Walmart. <laughs> and it's all in English. So the, the, there's a Google translator out there that is uh, fair. I, I, I think it isn't really a great, you know, it's, it's not a perfect translation, but we have a Google translator on there, and, and so folks can read it. How does um, the social media strategy fit with regulatory requirements? I think specifically, what the questioner is getting at is uh, there are requirements to provide anonymous reporting mm -hmm. on hotlines if people want to disclose things that are going on. Um, there are whistleblower rules that have been put in place this year. Does this strategy complement or inhibit uh, some of the regulatory requirements that are out there from your perspective? From my perspective, the, the more avenues you can give mm -hmm. people to have conversations, it, um, I would use that as, a, as an example. If we were ever questioned by a regulatory agency about, we have all of these avenues. We never try to find out who an anonymous complainant is um, because I want to, all I really care about is the substance of the complaint. Is it accurate or not? I don't care who complains. Um, so I think it, it provides people another avenue and, uh, to bring it forward. Given um, all of the social media that's going on externally, what's keeping you awake at night? What are you uh, worried about? You know, the thing that worries me the most is I'm going to miss the next trend. That that um, that that's what's what's going to keep it fresh. What's going to keep it real? And um, and I know that I I'm not smart enough in this space to to be the one. So I have to make sure I have smart people around me. That, that can see what's coming next. Got it. Um, last question that came in, are there any uh, privacy implications that uh, you've got to be concerned about as you adopt a strategy in this space? Uh, I think that it is important um, to make sure that folks know that this is a public forum so that, uh, and that's often why I'll go back to people, if they start telling me, if they start there's a post that feels pretty personal, I'll go back and I'll remind them, this is a public forum. Are you, do you want this out there? If you do, I'll post it. But, um, but I don't, and they say, often they'll say, oh no, I didn't intend that. So uh, yeah, I think it's using some common sense and if it feels like it's more revealing than, than you're comfortable with, just go back and, and try to respond to the poster. Okay. All right, we're uh, approaching our uh, closing time. We'd like to uh, thank our guest, Kathleen Edmond, the Chief Ethics Officer for Best Buy, for joining us and sharing key lessons learned from Best Buy on their journey to use social media to foster more open and transparent communications as they continue to build the ethical culture inside the organization. A couple of key points that uh, Kathleen shared with us. Blogging really provides another avenue, a way for you to communicate the behavioral and expectations you have in the organization, but you can use real-world dilemmas that really apply in the workplace in a timely way and strengthen the values in the organization. It's not for everybody. Each organization's got to decide where they are on the continuum of building in this kind of transparency. 
but once you make the decision, um, be open to where the conversation takes you. It's nothing that you can control, but you can make sure the company's points of views are clearly articulated and what are the behavioral expectations. You have to remember that conversations are no longer internal in this day and age of social media. They're going to be external, so be prepared for the messages that uh, you communicate internally. Be prepared. They could very well be externally. And then finally, don't, um, don't be easily offended. Um, respond constructively uh, because it's an opportunity and not a risk or a threat. It's an opportunity to tell your story and reinforce the character of the organization that you're building. Once again, thank you to Kathleen. Uh, please continue to stay up with us. If you'd like to uh, follow us on our website, the uh, links are shown there. Stay tuned for upcoming programs that we have at the center. And of course, this fall we'll be releasing a landmark book on the history of corporate responsibility. More in the future on that. Thank you for being with us and uh, have a great day.